This is the vision of our church. Taking hurts, giving hope, growing by love. Love. Because I know, amen, whatever I'm facing, whatever I'm contending with, it will come to pass. Amen. Tonight I want to talk to us about keep it in the family. Everybody say, keep it in the family. How many believe God makes us a family together? And as you and I have been ordained by God to carry on certain things from him, by him, we are entrusted by the Lord to, to do that in unique and awesome ways. Chapter 2, verse number 14 of the book of Acts. Would you say amen if you have that? It shall come to pass, saith God, in the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Would you say all flesh? You know, it's amazing. I don't know sometimes. I think that's missing out of some translations. He said all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. Your young men shall what? And your old men shall. Have I got any dreamers in the house? Father, I know you give us your word that we may grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we may profit the kingdom. And for that reason, we are gathered here tonight to carry on that which you purposed us to, keeping alive your heritage in the earth. We want to keep it in the family, Father. I ask you to move by the Spirit, touching our hearts and understanding in the name of Jesus Christ, and all God's people saying, amen. amen. God bless you. Keep it in the family. This is a continuation from what we talked about this morning. As God directed us, starting in the occasion and the accounting of Joseph, the son of Jacob. How he fell into difficulty and hardship. But he realized after it was all accomplished that it was God that set the stage for him. If you've ever went through a hard time, and I'm sure most everyone in here has, it looks like that the challenge and the difficulty will swallow you up. But I, if we will walk with God, he will walk us through whatever it is we got to walk through. The Bible gives us a story of what took place right after the pouring out of the Holy Ghost. The church has encountered a great phenomenon. It's been prophesied, but they didn't quite understand it until it showed up. There are some things that God has been preparing you and I for that he wants to do as he establishes his covenant in this earth generation to generation. How many knows every generation must have a fresh touch of God upon its life? Every generation must know who God is personally. It's, it's great that I know God. I can tell my children I know God. I can introduce them in a, in a physical way to the God that I serve. But every one of our children must have their own encounter with God. They can't live our experiences. They must have their own. And yet it provokes you and I into a place that we know we've got to produce an atmosphere in our own personification about us that God can entertain and move in. Do I hear an amen? I can't ever get past the place of honoring the Father. So my first point to come to you today, the answer to the question. And I brought to beside that what is the question. You know, it's, it's, you've heard me talk about this before, but let me just renew your mind. How many knows it's important to ask the right question? If you don't ask the right question, how will you get the right answer? They asked the question one time, why are fire engines red? How many remembers why fire engines are red? My wife says she won't come up and tell everybody why fire engines are red. Fire engines have uh, eight wheels and four men. Four plus eight is 12. There are 12 inches in a ruler. But Queen Elizabeth 
was the ruler over England. But the Queen Elizabeth was the biggest ship on the seven seas. In the sea there's fish and the fish have fins. The fins fought the Russians. And fire engines are always rushing, therefore fire engines are always red. Some questions get you nowhere is the moral of that story. <laughs> Aren't y'all glad for that great education you got tonight? <sighs> I do too, Brother Tom. I, I love that. I just need a new crowd every once in a while to... <laughs> uh, you got to ask the right question. And some people don't even know there is a question. But there is a question. <sighs> what shall we do to preserve the Lord's heritage in our community? How can we break the power of Satan over our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren? Peter said, repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And watch this. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some translations use Holy Spirit. I like the connotation Holy Ghost. It just has a punch <laughs> that I like. And I'm not going to fall out with you if you're a Holy Spirit person. I'm a Holy Ghost person. And when they preached it, they lived it, they prayed over it. <laughs> what an awesome thing. Verse 40, chapter 2, Acts, he said, And with many other words, many other words, he did testify. He exhorted. And he said, Save yourselves from this King James word is un." Toward. It means evil, crooked, perverse, wicked generation. I don't know a lot of things in this world, but I believe I can say we're living in an evil, crooked, perverse, and wicked generation. Can you say amen? Our God parted the waters as we come into the promised land. Promised land equals ministry. Watch this. If going through the Red Sea was a water baptism unto repentance, then going through the Jordan was a baptism of the Holy Ghost unto ministry. Mm. No, not many people think like I do. The stone was evidence. He said, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, I'm going to give you evidence. And there's only certain rocks that's going to tell you that you were in the creek bed. <laughs> Mm, am I got anybody's attention around here? I want to learn how to keep it in the family. And this is how God began to work out his, his shadows and, and the structure, the background, so that you and I could understand what he was after in our life. It wasn't about speaking in another language. It was about a power that would move through my life and prepare me to do the work he called me to do. How many of you God called you to do a work? Holy Ghost being poured out, it went from house to house. The church was empowered. 3,000 souls was added to that body of believers. I got to keep up something. And what they did here was good. So I want to work to see our children filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm talking about a power that's really real in their lives. Because power is what our kids need can you say amen? amen? 